Hello, and welcome to Dolphin's Dive, the weekly strategically minded Handelabra stream hosted on Handelabra Games. Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against those goals are not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra Games on Twitch or Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow me personally at Logic Dolphin on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, or pretty much any avenue. Sentinels in the Multiverse, Sentinels of Earth Prime, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, One Deck Galaxy, Aeon's End, Spirit Island, and Horizons of Spirit Island are all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices, with the exceptions of One Deck Galaxy, which is only on early access on Steam, and One Deck Dungeon, which is also available on Switch. You can find more information on those games at handlelabber.com. Alright, so last week we had a very bad match against Oblivion, and I kind of want to uh, get my revenge, because it was a really bad match. Made me feel really bad. Let's do this over again, but this time with more enthusiasm. Uh, make sure all of the decks are enabled. Hit random until we get four heroes. We have Engine of War Bunker, Akash Thria, Johnny Rocket. Is that base or variant? I think that's variant. <laughs> and Omnitron Hugh in the block, Rook City, Ruins of Atlantis, mobile defense platform, and the Terminus. Just gonna get into it. Hello, Nezu. All nations will crumble and collapse. The end has come. Time to build up some steam, or this could be the last stop. But um, psh. all right. Let's see what happens. Bore the unstable. Void Soul, the worst. And tier three reality dealing millions of damage. And man. Most of which are Aeon Locuses. Damage. Each target there deals itself to infernal damage. Okay. Fusion of Pain. So, at the end of Oblivion's turn, move Oblivion to the other battle zone. Each target there deals itself to infernal damage. If four hero targets are dealt damage this way, flip this card. So... Uh, unless we get more hero targets, which Akash Thria is capable of doing, then we need all the heroes to be in one battle zone and for Oblivion to move to that battle zone, which is not guaranteed. If this flips... At the start of a blue ant's turn, incapacitate all heroes here. If at least one hero is incapacitated this way, remove this card from the game. So we have to deal with an end cap. Womp womp. All right, so Boar, increased damage dealt by him by the number of tokens on this card. At the end of this villain turn, put a token on this card. Then this card deals each hero target in the play area with the most rewards one fire damage. The first time this card is dealt damage each turn, put a token on this card. He hurts. But you know what's worse? Void Soul. Whenever an objective card is flipped, this card deals itself two psychic damage and then flips. And then he does this thing and then this thing, and I hate it. Literally the worst. Alright. Top of the deck is the final champion. At the end of your turn, if there are more hero targets than non-hero targets in this battle zone, flip this card. Which gets us Cursor, which is a hero target. So, where are we at? First battle zone, four hero targets. First battle zone, one non-hero target. Second battle zone, no hero targets. Five non-hero targets. So the way to get this objective is to stay in this battle zone. So Bunker stays here. That's decided. Now, we do know that Oblivion is in the battle zone with Aeonman, um, which he's going to destroy them before he gets to this clause. So I don't presume that we're going to be flipping the shield, per se, because we don't want him to destroy the Aeon Locuses. 
as that's going to result in him playing two extra cards, and Oblivion card plays are bad. But we will have two heroes in this battle zone, or two hero targets with Bunker at least, so we could move one other hero to battle zone two to kill and Locuses, assuming that we have a hero that can deal four damage in one turn. Can you deal four damage in one turn? Twice? Deal X targets two melee damage where X is the number of momentums in play? Well, there are zero. Move one not indestructible non-character card from in play to under the top card of its deck. Hey, that moves that. So that does something. Draw one card, shuffle up to two cards from deck, high end face up into your deck. Each time a face card, face up card of yours is on top of your deck, put in play. Yeah, this is the variant. Johnny Rocket, for sure. Just the blur. Um, I guess we also have hero targets here, which means that we could theoretically move Omnitron U to the other battle zone. Uh, which, that deals two damage, which is not enough to kill an Aeon Locus. Rocket Punch deals three damage, which is also not enough. And it's also a power that we have to use, because we could use this power to play Disruptive Flechettes, but... Yeah. We could also put something into play, at, like one of, like because we have technological a technological advancement here, we could put a component into play that will just end up getting destroyed so that Omnitron can deal two fire damage. So that's a thought. But for now, there's only Boar here. We don't really want to hit Boar. At least not just yet. We could skip skip because we're not really doing anything here. We could do maintenance unit to give Bunker like some hit points. Since he took a beating like everyone did. Is two hit points worth more than a card? Well, if there are valuable cards in this deck, they would probably want to draw the cards. We don't really have valuable cards because this is Bunker. <laughs> so I'll just regain hit points. Got Final Champion, got Cursor. Also, top of the deck is Great Fortune. So, for Akash 3 to get that, probably Primordial Seed? Well, okay. Uh, we're staying here, right? That was the plan. Take the objective. And. Boar goes after who? Each hero target in the play area with the most rewards. Which is currently Bunker. Which means these seeds are theoretically safe if we play them. Or even Akash Flora is theoretically safe. Um, you do have to select a card from hand, so if we want to do a seed, we have to use the seed. Otherwise, we'd be like, watch out. So I guess we'd have to think about this. At the end of your turn, select a card in your hand, reveal the top card of your deck. If the reveal card and the selected card share a keyword, play them both. So if we do one shot, that's two, four, six, nine, eleven. But if we do primordial seed, that's three, five, eight, ten, thirteen. And if we do ongoing, that's two, four, six, eight, ten. And limiteds are all ongoings, except not all ongoings are limited, so you don't want to select limited. Well, actually, we're not selecting the keywords, but we're selecting the cards. So if we play a one shot or select a, an ongoing limited, it would select all the ongoings, it would select all the limiteds. But all the limiteds are ongoing, so that doesn't really help. Anyway, but if there was like equipment limited, that'd be different. Yeah, it was seed, right? Three, five, eight, and 13 versus. 11 versus 10. Wait, there's 36 cards on the deck though, so I'm not accounting for something. Unless there was also 13 one shots. I can't remember numbers. <laughs> I'm a mathematician and I have terrible number memory. 11 one shots. 3, 5, 8, 10, 13 seeds. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 12 ongoings. Okay, yeah, so it's they're all very close, but seed is 13, ongoing is 12, one shot is 11, so it kind of depends on what we draw. If I do instantaneous maturation, that's going to get a seed out of the deck. So I probably don't want to do that one. 
These seeds. Generally, I like to play these when they're played from the environment deck, but you could, of course, just play them to have more targets in play, which is fine. When this card is destroyed, you may destroy an environment card or a target with three or fewer HP. Could be helpful against the uh, Aeon Men. Put out the Strangling Roots then. And this draws a card. It draw a seed. And we drew another seed. So, and we also put a card from hand into the deck, so I guess, or into the environment trash, so actually that power wasn't necessarily correct, as now I can't select seed, but we did draw two seeds, and so the numbers are different. It's now 11 seeds, 11 one-shots, 12 ongoings, but we don't have ongoing here. So it's just basically, do I want to go for seed or one-shot? Probably just one-shot. Because the one shot puts a seed into play if we na if we nab it, and that one shot has more effect. You could take the objective and trade it later. Well, yeah, I guess I don't have to select a keyword or select a card. Ah, uh, but I will try one shot, and we revealed one shot. Play the top three cards of the environment deck. When you play a non-target card this way, Akash 3 deals herself one psychic damage and destroys an environment card. When you play a target this way, the target deals one target. Ugh, three toxic damage. All right, so let's do the seed first. Reduce damage up by four, most likely. Just because we're going to hit him. Um, we don't want to reduce anyone else's damage. There's no reason to. I guess we could reduce damage dealt by a seed in the event that Void Soul decides to come to this battle zone and then says, hey, this target is going to deal each target two damage. Two and two. So we could, like, maybe gamble that. It's not like these seeds are dealing damage anyway. Could do it on both just to be safe, I guess. Either play a card or shuffle the environment trash into the environment deck. So we could play a card. But we could shuffle healing pollen in. That's fine. So we get an agent. Which is a target. When you play a target this way, that target deals one target, three toxic damage. So we don't actually have to hit boar. We could just hit the filter officer. I don't want to add tokens to boar right now. Filter officer number two. Non-agent with the second lowest is going to be a seed. Warden Hopeful. Going after its own agents. All right, top card is actually a seed, fun fact. Um, okay. Top card is a one-shot. Search your deck and trash for the primordial tree. Put it into play while well, it's in my hand. Destroy any number of primordial seeds. The primordial tree regains hit points and I deal myself damage, but there's no tree in place. So it's not gonna do anything except I hit myself. But everyone else can play one shots, including myself, but I don't have one shots. Unless there is someone that allows cards to be played. That one shot doesn't help. We can play this one shot out of turn. That's pretty nice. Uh, because it's gonna give him a free action. Uh, so, if I put in Focused Plasma Cannon, I actually get to be able to kill the uh, second Aeon Locust with with uh, Disruptive Flechettes. So that's pretty good. We get a reset. Nice. An Iraqa can play free for all, but you have no momentums, so we will not. Bunker could decommission or external, but there are no cards in the trash, and we don't want to hit things, so I won't. Akash 3 has no playable cards, and I don't have anything to do here. And also, is this number of cards destroyed this way? There's another one shot of Akash 3's that is reactive to the number of damage that she's taken this turn, right? Um, it's the one that says you draw 
this card and draw based on damage you've taken this turn. Yeah. Draw X cards and discard X cards where X equals the amount of damage Akash 3 has dealt herself this turn. But this includes the four damage, but also all previous damage. So it's pretty cool. All right, so now we move Johnny Rocket to Battle Zone 2. We have the Shattering Blow, so hopefully we don't lose it. Oh, we also have Form the Mecha Knight. That's exciting. Uh, we need to do short-term solution to move an Aeon Locust out of play. Draw a card, shuffle up, up the two cards from my hand, face up into my deck. Kind of feeling like Momentums would be the one to do. Uh, we'd like to play the one-shots because they do things based on Momentums in play. We don't want them to haphazardly do things, right? We don't have to shuffle anything, but let's do two momentums. We get a flurry of blows, so when I change stances, I can move this card from my discard pile to my hand. Wait a minute, this is not Slay the Spire. Form the Mecha Knight, but we do not have four heroes in this battle zone, which means that we're just going to be drawing cards until we get everyone in the same battle zone. All right, so hit the Aeon Locust so we can kill it with Disruptive Flush Shots. I'm gonna play Reset first though. I like playing one Reset to get a uh, technological advancement back into my deck so I could draw it more likely. I didn't get it. Um, I do wanna use my base power to make sure that if I lose my Focus Plasma Cannon, I have Retaliation. They could put Exa Chassis out, that's fine. And then play Disruptive Flushes. Order doesn't actually matter for this, but... I could destroy that, but it has no reaction. We would like to destroy it with cards that do things with... Alright, Johnny Rocket does things based on momentums being destroyed with his cards, so we want to keep those. Alright. Uh, might as well draw. Also, if that revealed a, a face-up card, that would have played it, but it didn't. Might as well draw. Healing Pollen has been blurred. When this card is played from the environment deck, one hero target regains four hit points. I don't want to throw out an Akash 3 up, but... Bunker is lower, technically. Let's do an Akash 3 up, because I want to. And then you start killing things. Um, let's keep out the strangling roots so that Void Soul, if for whatever reason, comes in, then we have targets to hit for that. That will not deal damage. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Oh, but we reduced him by... Okay. Oh, but... He does have a plus one, so it's only one, one, and one. So it was a very good Strangling Roots play in the end. Because otherwise it was going to be three, three, and three. Uh, but we do have Cursor here, so let's reduce the first hit to Bunker. Might as well. He's the main target. And then the rest doesn't matter. Strangling Roots are dead. But I can destroy an environment card or target with three or fewer. I don't know, filter officer. And then Warden Huffle. It's not like the block is in my favor right now or ever. And this is dealing one damage, but he's added the token by now, so it's one plus two minus two. Uh, but it would just be one damage to 
Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter who. Let's throw it on Bunker. He has recovery. Increase damage dealt to hero targets by one. Thank you, Bladed Streets, for existing. Destroy environment cards. Very good. This plays a card. Uh, I will play an Aeon Man. Oh no, I played an Aeon Locust. Shit. Oh, but... Oh, but... That card moved things. Interesting. Destroy two environment cards. Move each Aeon Man to the other battle zone. If Oblivion is here, move Oblivion to the other battle zone. Okay, cool. Um... And this is Omnitron dealing the damage. And this is why I hate Void Soul. Oblivion deals damage! Well, the good news is we can actually flip the objective now. Uh, this is gonna kill the Aeon Lucas. Presumably, I want to move the heroes first, just in case the card says deal damage again. It's also possible that Oblivion plays the next card that says move him to the other battle zone, so like... It could be a wash. But let's... resolve this damage. Let's add the Devastation token. And this plays Temporal Fractures. And men are played. They're all Aeon Locuses. Oops, all Aeon Locuses. Like, what are the, what's the chances of that? The top six cards. Well, we did do a thing, but isn't that on the bottom of the deck now? Move a card from in play to under the top card of his... Okay, it was under... I thought it was the bottom of the deck. So it's under the top card of the deck. So one of these Aeon Locuses was the one that we moved. Okay, so it's not as unlikely. But, um... Because it was, what, two Aeon Locuses? Then we moved one of them, and then it's two more Aeon Locuses. That's what happened. So, like... Basically, four of the top five cards were Aeon Locus. Yikes. Okay. Four hero targets still damage this way is happening, right? Any reason to order this? I don't think so. We don't have any one-time effects. And now we have this lingering, drawn deadly attention at the start of Oblivion's turn and capacitate all heroes here. We can guarantee this objective flips by moving two heroes, or just rather at least one hero to either battle zone. We do have infusion of power. Um, this gives us the apex of humanity if we go for it. Which is a plus one, minus one effect. Pretty good for Akash 3, yeah, right? Pretty good on anyone, of course, but... The only way to get this, though, is at the end of your turn if there are only two heroes in this battle zone, which means that if we want Akash 3 to get it, we have to move Bunker and Akash 3 to the other battle zone. And this incapacitates all heroes here, which... Either lose the Shattering Blow or the Mecha Knight. We could, like, try not to get it. Like, what we could do is hope that Oblivion doesn't change battle zones this turn. There are three Aeon Locuses in play here, though. So, like, if we all move away, those Aeon Locuses are gonna. Are th these Aeon Locuses are gonna bleep shit up if we leave them here, though, is the problem, because he's just gonna destroy them. Oy. 
But like, we could, we could get the um, apex of humanity on Akash 3 by moving Bunker and Akash 3 We The only way to get the Mecha Knight this turn is to move Johnny Rocket and on the Tron U to battle zone one as well. And then we get that this turn, which isn't immediately beneficial, but you know. We could gamble, but like we either have to sacrifice Shattering Glow or form the Mecha Knight. They like leave one of those heroes here, send the other one to Battle Zone 2, have that whoever's here take care of the Aeon Locuses. Yikes, though. And I don't even think we have the ability of dealing with the Aeon Locuses. Maybe, actually, no, Singularity is here. And we have two equipments. Can definitely do that with the retaliation, right? Yeah, two damage to each. Well, no, because they'll only kill one, two of them, not three of them. Yikes. That does seem like the most likely situation. So I guess we're losing the Mecha Knight. We're keeping the Oblivion, or yeah, we're keeping Shattering Blow for the Oblivion Shard, which is more likely to occur anyway. Alternatively, we could leave Bunker here as the sacrifi sacrificial goat, but... No. Don't do anything with that. Play stuff. Because we're going to use this. Get something out there. Heavy plating is here. Move, take. Um, you're guaranteed to go after Akash Three at this point. Each share targeting to play area with the most rewards. It's gonna be Lucky Break and Apex of Humanity versus just Cursor versus nothing. So if I play Akash Flora, it's dead. If I play Healing Pollen. It will die, but it will do something. If I play Vitalized Thorns, it gets destroyed immediately, but I could deal damage, but I don't want to deal damage, so. Healing Pollen and Speed for my trash. Strangling Roots, sure. Primordial Seed, Bunker, you can play all the Primordial Seeds you have. Nakash 3 you can play a Primordial Seed. Basically... Play another Healing Pollen, I guess. Vitalized Thorns was played, Vitalized Thorns was destroyed. I do have to deal damage. I could do this to a Healing Pollen. I'm gonna do it to Healing Pollen. I don't want to hit Boar. I don't want to add tokens right now. There's no reason to hit Scions on page one. I have Akash 3 hit herself. Gives us the infusion of power. All right, then we're gonna leave Omnitron you here. So we move Johnny Rocket. And we wanna keep the Shattering Blow as we want it. So don't do it. Uh, I don't want to deal damage, don't want to deal damage, so skip that. Let's draw a card. And shuffle a short-term solution in. Do I want to move these? I think we want to control when those are played, right? So let's not play the one-shots. Even though we could shuffle them and get extra card plays at random. <gasps> Fleeting Mockery! When this card enters play, reveal the top card of one deck, discard it, put it on the top of that deck, or on the bottom of that deck. Then you may play one card. Uh, let's do Johnny Rocket, as it could reveal another card. It didn't. Okay. It is a momentum. Put it on top. 
distracting chatter deal damage destroy my momentum if you do that target cannot deal damage until the start of your turn that's pretty helpful i want to save that for oblivion although you could also stop four from dealing damage this turn saves the healing pollen but we don't care about that really i'm gonna skip the play All right, Omnitron, this is your sacrifice. Um, we could gamble on getting Hermetic. Hermetic? Hermetic. Hermetic? Hermetic? I've been told I mispronounce this name all the time. And I always forget what the actual pronunciation is. I think it's because I'm emphasizing the wrong syllable always the big thing. Hermetic. Hermetic. Hermetic? 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 Uh, this guy. <laughs> I mean, our damage is focused on Aeon Locust this round. But, I mean, I'm not getting the Mecha Knight. Let's swap. There's a chance we can, we can get this. There's a chance. Okay, this is going off. That helps. So I want to use Singularity after Volatile Wiring. I can play more things. So I play this. And then I do this. And then I play Singularity. And I destroy my stuff. And this goes off. This goes off. And then... Yeah, I think we can actually get this. It is going to flip Void Soul, but... And that's actually probably bad because that kills Omnitron most likely. But it's probably okay if we do get a, a reward out of this. Because this gives us Bloodstone. Oh, I can use this to stop Omnitron from being destroyed. Okay. Uh, this actually, I do need to get. <laughs> I do need to be incapacitated if I get this. Um. As in, I need to not. I need to be incapacitated by this to flip the shield, but I need this to destroy me first. If that makes sense. Actually, order matters because I need to hit Void Soul before it flips. I think it will hit Void Soul though. No, it didn't. Okay. Let's do that then. Do more damage. This is what makes Void Soul suck, is that the reason that I'm saying Void Soul's gonna kill Omnitron now is because this round now, Void Soul will deal each hero target in the play area with the most rewards, three infernal damage each. Then this card flips, and then we'll also have the hero target with the lowest HP deal each non villain target, two psychic damage, and two infernal damage. Like, why do I have to do both of these? Why? 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 Because of the rules of Oblivion, I know. Or not even Oblivion. Because of the rules of Sentinels and Order of Operations and all that. I know. I know. Doesn't mean I like it. I also don't like the timing on a lot of these shields, by the way. Bye, Char. Yeah, because, like, at the start of Oblivion's turn, incapacitate all heroes here. I mean, this sucks. Okay. But the timing on this occurs after the start of turn on this, which does the countdown. And when the countdown reaches zero, then you remove an environment. So if the countdown's on one, you can't flip the shield before you destroy the environment. So it's like stupid to have the countdown on one. Countdown at one means that you're losing the environment and you can't do a damn thing about it. 
I hate it. Why can't we just do this shield first and then do the countdown? Very easy fix. Just make this say, after doing the shield check, do the countdown. Whatever. Whatever. By, by healing pollen. The argument, of course, is Blavan does not need to be a fair thing. <laughs> Blavan does not need to play fair. Blavan is there to destroy you. He's like, ha, huh, countdown at one loophole. <laughs> okay. If definitive edition of Blavan becomes a thing, hopefully that's addressed. Yeah. It will be. All right, well, a Blaman is gonna incapacitate all the heroes and battles on one instead, so. That stinks. But we got the Bloodstone. And I'm destroying the Bloodstone so I can hit Void Soul. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what were the ongoing objectives? Shattering Blow. Oh no. That's unfortunate. Oh, well, that's only one no. We are on page two. Omnitron U is still, survive is still alive somehow. Five devastation tokens. Also, the crappy thing about this objective is that he's going to add four devastation tokens if he doesn't change battle zones because he's like, hey, there's no hero targets here. Well, that sucks. Guess I'm adding four Devastation Tokens. Oh, also, he's destroying things, but it doesn't actually matter. I mean, I guess I could have accidentally hit the guy first, but okay. I hit Random. Random has gotten me Writhe. And this is Base Writhe, so I get the Shadow Cloak guaranteed. That's pretty nice. Um, we have Purser also. Maybe not a huge priority with Writhe to get back. The current objective is Demand of the Gods. If four cards are destroyed this turn, you get to destroy Aeon Men, basically. Destroy Aeon Men once. But yeah. Um, we do need to make progress on the Blavan. We flipped him to page two, which is good, but like... We don't have, we only have six rounds and we're probably gonna lose an environment somewhere in between. Also, Focus of Power is here, which is not the same battle zone as a Blavan, but it is a risk. And Boar is also here, and you know how Boar goes. Good news though is that Boar could damage a Blavan, which is interesting. I think we stay here for now. Random is getting me Adamant Sentinels. They're all green. We have Team Communication. And we have Apex of Humanity, which is really good on Sentinels. Like, exceptionally good. Really good. <laughs> also, Lucky Break, but we probably want to get Apex in first. Especially for this side of the Oblivion. Deal each target for energy damage. Yeah. Although also, we could just reduce his damage by one, which is also really good. So, stay here then. Random, we have... Um, lifeline. This is base lifeline. Oblivion Nemesis, pretty good. So we're going to skip Cursor for now. We're going to take the Demand of the Gods just to get rid of it, basically. Nations and Ruins, at the end of your turn, if there are more hero targets in this battle zone than non-hero targets in the other battle zone, you may play extra cards to get El Mejor Legado. Also really good on Sentinels. All right. 
This is a pretty useless one shot. This does not do much except draw cards. This is okay. Doesn't hit Oblivion though. Product cloak is not in play. There's no ongoings or equipment or environments rather. So I'm doing unnerving target, and I'm going to get my shadow cloak. And you can stay there. I guess we could move this actually. Like we could move this to Sentinels because then they could like take the apex of humanity and not worry about not getting an objective. Uh move it to lifeline he doesn't have any objectives though, so we'd rather claim an objective. And we also I mean I guess we were thinking of getting this on Sentinels, but they could instead have Demand of the Gods and trade for nations and ruins down the road. Although we'll probably end up getting it, right? More hero targets than non-hero targets in the other battle zone. So six versus one, we're getting it for sure. So I guess we're just like, we don't want to like wait. What's the Sentinel's card that grants an extra power? Sentinel Tactics. Which we do not have in play. Um, let's just move this to Sentinels. And then you have it. Stay here, regain, Apex of Humanity. Start with Team Communication in case we draw a thing that gets signatures into play. We did not. So I will Apex of Humanity and reduce damage dealt by a Blavion by one. Unique capabilities. There we are. Stay here. Stay here. Take so that we have movement in the objective arena. Citizen Storm! Didion Sulfax is 5 damage to Oblivion, which is really good. Do we need to kill Aeon Warrior? Maybe. His destruction will hit... Have Oblivion hit someone for 7. It's not the worst. Let's just hit Oblivion. I guess Mehor Legato could kill uh, Aeon Warrior. Play cards. The block. We're getting inmates. Yikes. I'm crazed prisoner dealing second highest HP, which is not boar, which is bad. It's gonna hit us. Dr. Tramada in Battle Zone 2. Alright, so this is going after Lifeline for. 8 damage, plus 1. Not much I can do about it, though. We could kill Boar to make sure that the things don't hit us, but then Boar hits us, so, you know. Pretty bad. Okay. Do we need to join Battle Zone 1? This is going to destroy an ongoing card. So if I were to go to Battle Zone 1 with Citizen Storm, it's going to destroy either Unnerving Target or Apex of Humanity or Defensive Blast. We could also just shuffle it because Citizen Storm sucks. He's not the greatest. It does give us free ongoing destruction, but there's not too many ongoings despite the one that's right there. Uh, we're definitely playing Reset because that will get the Bloodstone back in the deck, which could make it drawn, which is nice. So let's just shuffle. Do I want to be here? Probably not. Unless I get the Threat of the Plachettes, in which case I could destroy Focus of Power. But Rook, Rook City sucks. Rook City sucks, Void Soul sucks, but on the other hand, if Void Soul doesn't hit anyone, he plays extra Scion cards anyway, which is also pretty bad.
Maybe I just stay here. It doesn't put it doesn't add a devastation token, so. Shuffle. Also, yeah, it's a good idea to shuffle. Because as you pointed out, Shattering Glow, it was moved to the bottom when we incapacitated Johnny Rocket. So shuffling puts it back somewhere that's not the bottom, so we can find it more easily. So we do want to shuffle, so it's a good shuffle opportunity. Let's reset. And you're having Psychic and Infernal be dealt, so I could reduce it to zero, but if no damage is dealt this way, play a card. So I don't want to do Temporal Shielding. I might as well play this. And I might as well use this. Okay. Ouch. Ouch. Great, more impersoned rogues. Flippin' fantastic. Damage. Or is very bore. He is dealing six plus one. Now, I don't want him. Oh, this is also Sentinel's Nemesis. It has to be Lifeline, as much as that sucks. Because that's gonna be a lot of damage to Sentinels. Sentinels are more valuable than Lifeline, unfortunately. Lifeline is pretty good damage, but then he just took a big beating, but Sentinels are more set up. Back from Shimada and Tony Taurus are in play. It's the dream! And we don't want that one. And this one also sucks, but at least it can be destroyed without playing extra cards. And you can hit Dr. Shimada, that's fine. This is an example where we want to take small cuts instead of a big slash. Alright. Damage. Move Oblivion, add Scion. Okay, we learned last week that when you add 15 Scions in the first two turns, it's kind of bad. So let's not add Scions. We're doing well in this match, mostly because we haven't incapacitated too many heroes. Also because we haven't added 15 Scions. Okay. This guy's immune to the hero damage, so actually none of this damage is happening other than to Omnitron. That's funny. Okay. Devastation token, play a card. Deal each target in the game damage. Well, it's zero damage to the Sentinels. <laughs> Um, I presume order doesn't matter. We don't have cursor. We have shadow cloak, but it's not going to do much. It's actually making it zero to to a uh, writhe as well. So. Lifeline, I think, is dying to the end of turn hit. But at least he got an objective. So he was, we, we had a productive round with Lifeline. And we can destroy the Time Crazed Prisoners! Yay! They're not helpful to us. Alright, lifeline dead. Rest of this matter? Probably not. I guess the time craze prisoners were dying anyway. Um, to this damage. So I could have also gotten the imprisoned ag agents out. Imprisoned rogues. But the, the uh, inmates only deal damage at the start of the turn. So it's not a big risk to leave them out. Plus, the agents in there aren't doing anything anyway. Uh, this is 
not Nemesis, right? Because your Sentinel's Nemesis. And we have the minus one, minus one, so it's only two. I'm willing to take two. You love how a prison riot is going on while the end of the multiverse is going on, right? Prisoners are always going to just assume they have... Like... Main character syndrome, really? Alright. Lifeline's replacement is Prime Warden's Haka. Extreme Prime Warden's Haka? No, this is just Prime Warden's Haka. Oh, it is Extreme Prime Warden's Haka. Okay. We have a ground pound. 11 devastation tokens. Okay. That's because we incapped a hero, right? We can remove a devastation token by taking our boar. And since we are on page two, he won't be replaced right away. And he is really low. And he is at seven. If I play Ground Pound, non-hero cards cannot deal damage, which means that the flip side of Boar wouldn't deal damage. You have to be careful because he's not a target on this side. Although he is a card dealing damage. But he is not a target. Uh, because if we do just destroy him, like, have, say, have the Sentinels do it, he is going to have, e he's going to do these targets 7 energy and 7 fire, which will wipe out the Sentinels, even with their minus 1. So... We could do Ground Pound to prevent that. It does mean Oblivion doesn't take a lot of damage, but I feel like we'd rather not take a million damage than... We'd rather not take a million damage than to uh, whittle down Oblivion a bit, because the countdown is at five, so we're mainly okay there. Alternatively, we could try to set it up for Rive to kill it with the Shadow Cloak, preventing some of this damage, but we'd have to move all the other heroes away, and the timing on that's awkward. We could also move Rive and the Sentinels out and have. Haka kill Boar if he has enough damage, which he doesn't. I mean, he could get her legato back. Uh, but he, yeah, his incaps don't help. His power doesn't deal damage. And if he reclaims Mihor legato, he wastes his play on Mihor legato, which means he doesn't get elbow smash. The top card is building a king, which does get T-Rex bot, which is another option for killing Boar. But you have to move three equipment cards, and you currently have zero. And Omnitron has two. And this is at the end of the turn. So you could take the objective and then move, oh, but you don't have a thing. So we could use this power to bring in equipment from the trash, but we don't have that. Yeah, so I think we have to do ground pound and kill boar with it somehow. Might require Omnitron, although he doesn't... Oh, I guess he has defensive blast. Now deal. F he has to discard a plating card. He doesn't. Oh, he does have a plating. Okay, so we could deal four damage to Boar. This deals each non-hero target one damage each. So we have to hit Boar one other time, and then we have to do ground pound and then defensive blast. So if we want to have a hero in Battle Zone two to not lose the devastation token, it has to be either. Rive or Sentinels. Non-hero target with the lowest deals... Sorry, the hero target with the lowest deals each non-villain target, two psychic, and two infernal. Which... Can we make that be Medico? Uh, I think we can. Oh, 
Okay. The unique, unique capabilities for Hippocratic Oath. Whenever Medico would deal damage, prevent the damage, and a hero target regains that much HP. So we just have to hit Medico with, like, Mainstay. And that will put him at 9. And he'll be lowest. And then when he would deal damage... When he would deal 2 and 2, instead we regain 2 and 2. Except it's actually going to be 3 and 3, which is really good. So, Alright, so you can stay here, Haka. So what does so uh, going back to our thought here, we have to put boar at one, or sorry, we have to do at least one damage to boar, but not five or greater, and we have to do that before uh, on the Tron's turn. Uh, we still don't really care for curse. I guess this increases. All non-character card hero target damage by one. Oh, we can't play Moher Legato this round, and you don't have any. Are you regaining Lucky Break? Probably. That's really valuable. Um, But that's still not a target that's going to be dealing damage. So let's take on Building a King. This is a good target for it. It's weird when you like flip when you click this rope really fast because you only see like the flip animation and it yeah. It's, it's nice how they like implemented the flip animation. Is this like an animation speed thing? I put this at really slow. Does it like flip really slow? Oh yeah, look how nice that flip animation is. Look how nice it is. I mean, it's a really simple thing, actually, because, like, all it is is it's like the card is scrunching into a vertical line. But it does give the appearance of flipping, right? Yeah. Sorry, I got distracted. Okay. So we have to do a damage to Boar, and our power doesn't deal damage, and we're not getting T-Rex Bot... Are we getting T-Rex Bot? Because we just have to destroy or discard equipments. Which we have like Umbral Siphon. We don't really want to lose the Shadow Cloak though. I mean, we could, but we want to... Generally, we want the Shadow Cloak to be in play and we want to destroy it on our turn and bring it back pretty quickly. So we don't really have enough, but... We can wait until Omnitron's in the same battle zone because you have equipments you could destroy and have retaliations. But this is the one that we don't really care for, so let's do this one, as it will do just enough. Um, we don't need to use that power. And... We only have one equipment in hand, one in play. And you have zero, zero, and you have zero, zero. So we will not do this. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, so we were going to do this with Void Soul, right? Okay. And we want to regain Lucky Break. Not going to be super effective this round, but that's fine. Get the Hippocratic Oath. Kinetic Wallop. Um, we have to hit Medico, but we can do it with Mainstay's power. So let's put out the Lucky Break. Hit Mainst or have Mainstay hit Medico. Alright, so now Void Soul should focus on Medico. Yeah? Medico and Omnitron U, but Omnitron U is going to move. I want to move this to Omnitron U's play area. Not particularly. The three targets are gained one, so let's have everyone except Medico 
on the Sentinel's end, regain the hit point to make sure that in case an environment screws this up, that they're still low enough. It's a one shot. So, we can all play one shots. Uh, you don't have a one shot. We don't want each here. We don't want each hair target to regain hit points because Mainstay's not going to regain the hit point. I guess we could because it's only one and nine is far away from 15 anyway. We could also just do a lot of damage with coordinated assault to avoid soul. So let's do that. We can also have Lucky Break do it because one of my hair targets, Lucky Break is one of my hair targets. Ah! If we had Cursor here, it actually would deal more damage, but. One of your heroes deals one target, two melee damage. We could have Medico do this to regain hit points, but let's let's do this. Let's do damage. Let's try to get rid of Void Soul for devastation tokens, maybe. Destroying Void Soul. Each hero target regains three HP. Not really the greatest, but All right, stay here. The reward is Mihor Legato, but we're playing Ground Pound this round. Uh, we could take this just to move it on. It's not the greatest, but get it out of the mission deck. Ground Pound, discard two. So I'm probably going to discard Elbow Smash anyway. I could redirect damage that would be dealt to Void to a Rive. Not really a reason to. You have the Shadow Cloak, but I don't have to. Or no, sorry, it does, it does say redirect. You're forcibly redirecting. Hello, John. Oh, but we're also, we also have Ground Pound. And also Ground Pound with Oblivion is not a good idea anyway, so maybe I shouldn't have done that. Hmm. Hmm. But we're stopping Boar from blowing up, I guess, is an advantage, I guess. Is it? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm rethinking things now. I kind of wish I had Citizen Storm now. <laughs> Um, if we could somehow destroy Ground Pound before Oblivion's turn, that would be great, but that's not going to happen, is it? I guess there's a chance Oblivion moves Battle Zones. Small chance, though. Because I would kind of like to Ground Pound on the turn of Oblivion's destroying an environment, but I guess that's also just as bad as destroying Boar with Ground Pound out, so I guess, I don't know. Okay. At the end of turn, each player may discard a card. Then any player who discarded may draw a card. If two more one shots are drawn, flip this card. So we could discard things that we don't care about. I don't want to keep the equipment in case we want to get building a king somehow. Um. That moves the equipment from my trash to my hand, which is helpful let's discard that one let's keep the hawk of restoration as that draws we drew one shot we drew ongoing we did not get meager winnings all right so we go back to battle zone one at the end of return each player may discard any number of cards whenever an equipment card is discarded add a token Whenever! And that will give us Chekhov's hairdryer. Whenever. Whenever! Alright, so do we prefer one or the other for a plating? We're gonna discard a plating with this, but... You're dealing energy? So if you were to deal the damage with Ground Pound out, then you would want energy reduction anyway. 
I guess that's fair. So let's put this out and defensively blast. Oh no, non hero cards cannot deal damage. Forsooth. Whenever. I also got a token because we discarded the plating, which is an equipment card. <laughs> he cannot deal damage. Oh no, it's twisting back alleys. If only I had foreseen this inevitable consequence. Oh. Wait! Wait! That screws up my entire plan! No! No! Oh man, I had this all set up so that Medica would deal damage and you played the one card that would screw that up. Oh man. It's okay. I think we will be fine. Move up Levan to the battle zone with the most hero targets. It's battle zone two, plot twist! Four hero targets versus three. Wow. Uh, we don't have any minuses though, that's a bit unfortunate. We have twisting back alleys! Okay, I guess we have Apex of Humanity. Okay, fair enough. Witzel is so cringe. Agreed. I hate him. He's the worst. Okay. Uh, we're not losing a hero with this. And by a hero, I mean one of the Sentinels, which is not actually losing a Sentinel. Or losing the Sentinels, period. Man, imagine if we had medical regaining hit points for us. We would not be almost dying right now. Alright, Progeny is here. So now we move to battle zone two. We're at 11 tokens since we did not add four. If we don't want to add a devastation token, we would want to leave a hero in battle zone one, but we could also destroy void soul probably. And that would give us a devastation token and hit points. We could try to kill void soul with Omnitron. We don't have a plating. This is doing two damage. So I'm sure there's a way to make that work. So let's not worry about Devastation Tokens, let's move. Whenever, whenever, whenever a hero card is discarded, add a token. That will give us the Expedition to Atlantis. Uh, but we have Building a King right now and we're happy to not lose it. So let's take Cursor now. This is a good opportunity to reclaim that. We have Mejor Legato, right? Well, we can reclaim Mejor Legato. So that benefits Mejor Legato is really why I'm saying that. That's fine. Don't need to use this one. Shadow Cloak is still in play. How many equipments? Probably don't want to discard until we have this also in play. So skip. Also, Sentinels don't have that much. Stay here. We don't care for demand for the gods at all. Extra powers on Sentinels? Sure. Bloodsworn Colosseum is next. Let's get Medico back. And then let's reduce Oblivion's damage. Oh, we do have Twisting Back Alleys, yikes. 
That does make it a bit awkward. Up the three targets regain a hit point. I want my sentinels to be alive. Thank you. All right, we do have one shots. We have Unquiet Knight, the destroyed environment card. <gasps> also, bear in mind, focus of power is here. Oh shit, I forgot about that. Oh shit, uh. We could destroy it with this. I mean, we could also destroy it with Unquiet Knight, but I also want to destroy it twisting back alleys. Just to get rid of that frickin' minus one. How long has Focus been out for? It's been out for what, like three rounds? Uh, but we haven't been in Battlezone 2. And by we, I mean Oblivion. We've had a hero in Battlezone 1 for a while, but... Uh... The Shadow Cloak is in play, you may draw a card or play a card, so we could play something else. Not sure what would be helpful there. I was hoping to re regain me here legato. I guess I don't need it. It increases Haka's damage, but Haka doesn't have that much damage yet. And this just does two damage plus one. Okay, so we'll just destroy Focus of Power with the in-cap. Destroy twisting back alleys. Is card play better than draw here? Uh, what was the top of the deck again? There's a thing that said deal damage. I know that much. I don't think I'm too worried about dealing damage to Void Soul. I'm sure we'll do enough once we get to Omnitron's turn. So let's just draw a card. Yeah, Idealist is dealing three damage to Void Soul, so this is two. Oh, we do need one more point of damage. Oh, but it's plus one because of Apex, so we, okay, it is enough now. Okay. Um, if you do positive energy to regain more hit points, that will also hit Void Soul, but then we can't hit it with the second part. Okay, so let's not do that then. HP recovery, I guess? We could just do Fling in the Darkness, actually. Actually, why am I worried about doing too much damage? I could just kill Void Soul and then do... Oh, yeah, why am I like, I don't want to do damage? Like, that's stupid. I want to deal damage. It's not that I'm trying to intentionally kill... with... I guess HP recovery would be nice, but I could just kill Void Soul. Like, I'm not worried about killing Void Soul in a certain way, right? Also, I have to be worried about an objective flipping if we leave Void Soul out, so let's not do it. Okay. Let's not hit anyone else because we don't have redirects. We could prevent the first damage to Writhe with the discard, but that's dumb. Whenever a hero card is discarded, add a token, but we don't have create contraption here, so let's not do that. Alright. So we need to bring Haka. Let's regain Mihor Legato. Oh no, sorry, I can't regain Mihor Legato, right. I was 
I was doing this to destroy the ongoing card. I have to use the ink cap for that. Okay. Uh, let's. We don't have hit points to regain. I guess I could just skip, skip, and draw more. Because I don't really need to use my power. And these cards aren't super great. Ah, yes! Enduring Intercession! Fantastic! Each player may discard one card. Well, I'm going to discard an equipment card. Wait, what's that? I discarded an equipment card! Oh my god! Oh, wait, that's, just, that's the wrong one. No, you're not in this battle zone. Poop. But hey, whenever. Whoops. God damn it. Whenever. <laughs> whenever. One shot. One shot. Yay, bigger winnings. Minger winning. Alright, so move. You wanna trade? We could do another or no, we can't do another round of meager winnings, right? We just got it. But we could go for building a king now, because this is intentionally if at least three cards enter the trash this way in one turn. So this is not a counter thing, it's a calculation thing. And I discarded an equipment, and that was dumb. That was dumb. I do have equipments here, at least. We can activate this power. It will bring an equipment back from my trash, which is pretty good. Okay, so let's get the building the king then. Play that, might as well. Let's bring an equipment card from my trash, might as well. So at the end of turn, each player may discard and or destroy any number of the equipment cards. So we want to discard equipment cards as much as we can to trigger discard effects, which we only have... Okay, well, you have none. You could destroy the Shadow Cloak, but that doesn't count as a discard. And you have none, and none... And that's the discard. Adds the tokens. And then we can destroy things. Let's leave the plating out. Because destroying my things does have an effect. And we have gotten three cards into the trash this way, so we get T-Rex bot. With a plus one from Cursor. Block guard is hitting progeny. Progeny cannot deal damage. Progeny super cannot deal damage. Sucks to suck. Damage. Oh no, T-Rex bot is being hit. Actually, I should have hit Cheese Swarming because Cursor. I can discard a card to prevent the damage. I'm good. Move the countdown one. Rude. The target with the lowest HP. 
Aw oh, man, it's not... Wait, who is it? Target with the lowest HP deals each non-villain target other than itself. It's not Medico though, so why does it... Why? Why? Why has God forsaken me? Is it? It's. Oh, it's Writhe. But not Void Guard Writhe. Which means it's Nemesis damage, which is bad. If any hero character cards are dealt damage this way, move those heroes to the other battle zone. Man, why couldn't have this been Medico? This is literally the worst. What's funny is that Riot is also going to move himself to the other battle zone, which is kind of preventing the... Uh... Oh, it's also going to negate the minus one from Idealist. That sucks. But at least Rive, Void Guard Rive is here to take the four damage. And if no damage is dealt to hero, so I do need to have this damage happen. They deal nom damage. What the heck is nom? All right. Now we have to think, because we don't have an easy Scion to destroy, so are we going to blow up an environment? We are pretty low on the countdown, though, so it is a bit of a risk. We don't have super big damage capabilities, unknowingly. Our big damage is, is a T-Rex spot. So we're kind of not, I don't think we're going to be able to do 136 in two rounds at this rate. It kind of sucks that Hawk is not doing well with damage. Sentinels are a big damage source as well, to be fair. But if we bring everyone to Oblivion's battle zone, so I guess, okay. I guess we leave Hawkeye in Battle Zone 1 because he's not he's not doing well on damage. So let's leave Hawkeye in Battle Zone 1. Have every other hero in Battle Zone 2 to take on Oblivion. That sounds right. So you stay here. Great contraption is fine. I want to shuffle this because this effect sucks. Do an in-cap to draw a card, destroy an ongoing card, put a card from Hero Trash on top of its deck. Man, that would have been nice to have gotten Bloodstone back, just saying. Oh, Nemesis damage? Yeah. The rules of Nemesis is if you are damaging another target that has the same Nemesis icon as yourself, then you deal plus one damage. It's the rules of the game. Makes as much sense as, you know, the shield saying at the start of this turn, blah, 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 which doesn't work if the countdown's at one because that check happens after this check and you lose the environment. Even though you had the countdown at one all round, you know you're losing the environment. Blah, blah, blah. Put a card from here, trash on top of its deck. You could put unique capabilities on top. That would be an effective one. Although we're in battle zone two, so it's really just my own. And I don't care for those. Okay. So let's shuffle. We get true hero. Each hero may deal themselves two psychic damage. Medico's like, here, have healing instead. Fun. Um. I would really like to have a power that does something. <laughs> I had Umbral Siphon. I discarded Umbral Siphon and then ended up. Well, I guess I can. Okay, I get. Okay, I have Umbral Siphon. I also have Grasping Shadow Cloth. 
When this card on display, move a card from a trash pile to the bottom of its deck, and you destroy the Shadow Cloak if you do. Cards cannot be played from that deck. If we can get to page three, that would be really good. And Empyrean is really good to have because he doesn't do damage, right? I mean, he could play a card, but we can discard a card. Wait, we could discard a card? We could discard a card? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Uh, I could discard Grafting Shadow Cloth, but I'm not going to. Alright, Sentinels go to Battle Zone 2. Yep. Expedition to Atlantis Keep. We do want this. I mean, Brother Sacrifice is good, but also so that Medico deals damage. Uh, but I guess that's Omnitrons. Yeah, Omnitron is a thought, so we don't want that. Uh, we could trade this if we really wanted. I mean, we've kind of just been holding on to these and not getting them because we're like, oh no, I could get discard some other way, and then I never get a discard. Wait, 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 wait. Medico deals up to two targets, six irreducible energy damage each? Hello? We could also do incap ability. Destroy an environment card. Reduce damage dealt to by environment targets by two. That target is indestructible. This is not an environment target. Sad. Um. I'll trade. Let's trade. This just needs one token. Or sorry, no, it needs five tokens. I thought it needed three. But it was the T-Rex bot that needed three in one action, really. Okay. The first time this card is dealt damage, it deals energy damage. These are the people, though, that don't take damage, so that's okay. Wait, no, cursor. No, why? No. I hate that effect. Cursor was used up on a zero damage. I'm pretty sure this is inconsistent with other things that say the first damage that would be dealt. Like the first time, the first damage that would be dealt to blah, redirect it. I'm, I think if you take zero damage doesn't count for that, does it? I guess it's actually consistent with Sentinel, with a, uh, with this rise thingy. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I haven't played Sentinels enough to be able to say consistently, but first time you deal damage, you turn, reduce that damage by two and redirect it. But if you had a minus one, which you don't generally have, oh, no, you have block, so you do generally have it. But if you take one and it's reduced to zero, I don't think it uses up Kalek in this form. Whereas, Reduce the first damage that would be dealt. The first time would be dealt damage. I don't know. It's 
just been my pet peeve for a while. But it's mainly with Cursor that my pet peeve exists, so it probably is just because this is how it's always been. Eh, you're gonna be healing more. We're playing Blackout! And these are one shots. We're playing one shots. You may use a power. One shot. Okay, this does the most damage. Rive deals damage this way, the damage target then deals each non-hero target to infernal damage. We could have Empyrean hit Oblivion, but it would only be two. If I hit Oblivion, Empyrean would only be hit for one because he has a minus one right now. So it's probably better to just hit Oblivion. I mean, this also, Empyrean would also be dealt two damage by himself, but... Uh, I don't think this target matters, but we'll do mainstay, I guess. Lucky Break is not one of my heroes, though. Alright, you're gonna stay here to block Progeny from having... ...an extra Devastation token added. Next time you dealt damage, add a token. At the end of the zone turn, add a token, deal each target energy damage equal to the number of tokens. We're going after my Hero Legato if I play it. I could just play it. One hero target regains one HP. P Rack Spot. And sure. Redirect damage from Haka to Haka. Okay, I got a power I could use. Uh, don't hit Progeny though. You move. You take. You play. You have no card to discard for Defensive Blast, but you can move a card from your trash. Yay! T-Rex spot! Medico hits himself. Oh no! Someone accidentally regained hit points instead! Forsooth! Probably don't want to do the other other ones though. <laughs> oh, it's tragic. We're just too low. Destroy all inmates. Increase damage dealt by agents by one. Yikes. Mejor Legato will never deal damage. Move up Levan to this battle zone. 
Yikes. Well, I guess we're just gonna blow up Battle Zone 1 then. Oh no, a discard. Oh no. Whenever a hero card is discarded. Whenever an equipment card is discarded. So that says discard an equipment card. Oh no. Deal damage. Yikes. Each hero dealt damage this way. Destroys one of their non-character cards. Neither of them are getting damaged. Well, sorry, he gets damage, he's not a hero. This is not a hero. Damage was not dealt. Select the player to discard or destroy a card. Oh no. I guess I could discard the temporal shielding. This will flip this. It doesn't flip this just yet, but the other equipment to discard is Grasping Shadow Cloth, which I don't want to discard. Yay! Add a devastation token. Destroy the non-villain target with the lowest. Mejor legato! You were the sacrifice! Okay, well... This is now awkward. We have 12 devastation tokens and the countdowns at 1. So we did a lot of damage that round, but was it enough? Because, like, how many hit points did we have to be able to deal? And we are still at 98. It certainly, we certainly did not deal 98 damage last round, because we didn't start at 196 hit points, right? Because your max is 180 anyway. So I guess... It's kind of hard to tell what is it max is, because these are in the way! But... Is that like a bug? Like, should we be able to say that you should be able to see his hit points? I guess you could do this. As in, you do this and then flip the card and you can briefly see the hit points as the card flips. Interesting. I guess you can scroll that up. Okay, so that is the thing. Okay, never mind though. So, like, I don't think we can prevent the countdown. I don't think we can destroy Empyrean either, because this flip side is a bit difficult. We cannot deal him melee projectile or energy damage. Which, to be fair, we do have a lot of infernal damage. I guess, though, that our plan of action is to just vacate everyone to Battlezone 2. By vacate, I mean Haka. <laughs> By everyone, I mean Haka, because apparently we're all in Battlezone 2 already. Weird. Next up is time and time again. Each player may discard any number of cards. What? Discard? The only equipment left to discard is Grash Speaking Shadow Cloth, and I don't want to discard it. We can certainly discard or shuffle trash piles, like that's not bad.
And that will give you Chronoist. With Cursor, that's four and four. Wait, is Cursor dead? Wait. Oh no, Cursor's here, okay. I guess they're gonna blow up two environments and they're gonna be in battles on one hopefully the first one is the devastation token one right or no oh it's this one oh oh that means we can guarantee that he blows up battles on one twice so that's pretty nice like even if we move to battle zone two and then the scions move from the battle zone two you can blow up battle zone one twice still. Okay, so we'll just stay in battle zone two then. Cause I don't, I don't foresee being able to deal 98 damage. So let's stay here. Let's take. Now we could damage Empyrean. Damaging Empyrean will make him deal energy damage to everyone. Most of us are blocking the damage except T-Rex bot who's okay to take the damage and lucky break but i do want to be careful that if i do like damage empyrean that i kill empyrean because i don't want him to deal damage on this side because that's a lot of damage I guess once I get to Sentinel side, I can do this power to reduce his damage because I'm not damaging Oblivion with that. But it's still going to be two energy damage to everyone. Minus one to Sentinels, minus one to Writhe, minus two to Omnitron U. We have an extra power, by the way. Wait. Oh, I do not have an equipment for my trash. Dang. Dang it. Yeah, so I have an extra power. Okay, so I could do Darkly Dreaming. Destroy the Shadow Cloak so that blah blah blah. Then I can use my base power to get the Shadow Cloak in play, and then my extra power is Umbral Siphon for damage with the Shadow Cloak increase. And that's a lot. Can we do 38 across all the heroes? We do have... Well, I guess this is melee. We can't use T-Rex Bot to finish off Empyrean's flip side, because he's immune to melee. Although, Umbral Siphon prevents HP recovery? So flip side Empyrean. When he would be dealt energy when he would be dealt energy damage, he regains that much HP instead, but we prevent the HP recovery, so it wouldn't be bad. Well, I mean he still doesn't be dealt the damage anyway, right? Wait, I wonder though. If the target cannot regain HP. Do we block the instead clause and deal energy damage anyway? I don't think that's how that works, but <laughs> uh, that would be that would be fun <laughs> to be like, if you cannot regain HP, you cannot trigger the instead regain HP text. So therefore, you do not instead regain HP. You will be dealt the energy damage. That I don't think it works that way, but it'd be cool if it did. I'm saving this for Flip Oblivion. I guess there's no harm in putting Empyrean low, I just don't really want him to be low low. Oh, 
Oh, damn it, cursor. No. Damn it, cursor. Cursor. Stop reducing the zero damage. It's only me and Sentinels. Oh, you don't have cards, right? That's why you aren't an option here. Um, is there any reason to... Like, we could avoid d uh, shuffling Sentinels in to make sure that, like, we're, we're more likely to get team communication or unique capabilities, but I think it's... Because there's 2-2 two, two in 22, and there's 1-1 one, one in 11, I think it's probably the same probability either way. I could avoid shuffling Omnitron because it makes it less likely to draw Bloodstone. Plus this power fizzles, or doesn't fizzle fizzle, but like we don't have a card in hand, but we could get an equipment for my trash or something. Something! So we could just do Writhe and Sentinels, right? We already Wrath of Shadow Cloak. We're fine to do that, okay. Time and time again. We want plays. I guess it would do extra damage to Imperium, but we could also just have Kronos deal the damage. Empyrean is going to flip. Shattering blows here. <laughs> Should we put it on Sentinels? I mean, it could go on Haka, except Haka is not really the damage dealer of the group. However, on Omnitron U, that is exciting. But we could just, um, we could just have Haka take it and then on the turn you trades with Haka, I think. It doesn't have True Hero in the end go off this round, but it does leave True Hero in the end as an active thing for potential medico shenanigans and chicanery. So we don't want to shuffle, we don't want to swap. We could trade? Do we have any other equipments yet? The answer is no. The trade is with Omnitron U, so actually that would be fine then to trade with U for that. Because the end caps here weren't great, right? Strain environment, there are none. Reduce damage, who cares? There are no environment targets. Yeah, so those were ineffective. So, this is Psychic, so it will hit Empyrean if we flip him. That's Psychic, so that will hit Empyrean if we flip him. Melee. No G. Psychic. Now we do this. Human shield. T Rex bot. Just give it to the non heroes, weirdly. 
Ongoing limited. Ongoing limited, eh? All right, so ongoing limited is concealed assailant. That's fine. Omnitron U has no cards. Sentinels have human shield. Sure. Sentinel tactics is out. So we do want sentinels to deal damage so they can use an extra power, right? I don't know if there's, well, I guess we could just use this power, huh? Um. So definitely Medico hits himself. Hippocratic Oath, yeah, yeah. Give this one to Writhe. I want my Sentinels to stay alive. You do not have Psychic Reduction. Cursor blocks this. So let's do this. Sentinels use the, the dealt damage so they can use a power regain hit points. And draw a card. Yay! Unique capabilities! And then we don't do the rest because I don't want to do the rest. Okay, so join Battle Zone 2. Take. Make our winnings! Okay, so Empyrean is immune to melee. Um, let's just do this so I can get it in play and draw cards. I guess I could keep it in hand to discard for equipment discard thing. But let's just draw cards. How about that? I drew another mare. Tamboko. Okay. Stay where you are. We're going to trade with Haka. And. I can get the equipment from my discard, which is effectively a draw, so I might as well do it. I guess if I draw a draw, it's more likely I get Bloodstone. I could even get Bloodstone this round. Let's take the plating back, because then I could use Defensive Blast with the plating. Which seems reasonable. T-Rex bot! Time Crazed Prisoner's back. Time Crazed Prisoner's dead. So much for that. Lockdown does not get destroyed. <laughs> That's funny. Progeny flips. Damage. Nothing happens. Falling Statuary. Choose who you want to take damage. Ow. I think if it's a raid. Okay, Empyrean says damage to Rive. You could redirect to the mainstay instead. This is where Caligonus form would have been great. Move one Scion from the other battle zone to this battle zone. Well, you were supposed to stinger at me. Um. I can move Faultless. Well, okay, so Progeny. Deals X, 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 and then removes a token, whereas Faultless deals each hero target to play your area with the most rewards three and one. So who has the most rewards? Cursor, Chronoist. Apex, Hippocratic Oath, Lucky Break, so that's three. 
Acre winnings is one. Your X bot is one, so it'd be Sentinels. Deal three and one to the Sentinels. We do have Human Shield. Whereas this is gonna be three, three, three. I mean, if I could destroy Faultless, that would be great, because then I get the heroic Faultless, but... I mean, Oblivion is going to be move, moving to the Battle Zone. We're just we stuck here for the rest of the match, right? Let's just bring Faultless. Oh, and you're also hitting everyone for three as well. Oh, Hippocratic Oath is not a reward already. <laughs> Shut up, John. All right, zero there. Only one, so we're not blocking that. Is it only the first instance that I block? Yeah, that's lame. Oh, and it's also only one of these as well. Two to Haka, two to Lucky Break. Yes, yeah, so these guys can take the damage. We could redirect the Arrive damage. I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna say no to these. I could discard an Equipment Drive, but I don't want to lose Grasping Shadow Bloth, so. Going after this battle zone. Or sorry, you're going after this hero. Why? Because Atlantic Conduit, Cursor, and Chronos. Okay, so that's why. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Aha! A nerving target! You know, you know, you know, you know. I see the error of my ways. Also, do we still have the objective that needs discards? Or have we gotten that? This is the discards one? This is discard and equipment. Wasn't there one that needed six discards? Or did I already get it? I already got it, right? Just Chronos? No. What was it? <laughs> I'm confused. Um. Oh, it's Atlantean Conduit. Okay, okay, okay. I was confused just because there was three other cards in front of it because I played three cards that round after getting it. Okay. So the only discard that would make sense for Rive would be the equipment that I don't want to discard, but if I were to discard it... We would have Chekhov's hairdryer. I don't think it's really that worth. This was Cursor. Yeah, Riot is fine taking damage.
You don't take it. This damage is all fine. You want that to go through. That's okay. We could redirect that. So that lucky break's not as hurdy. I think that's okay. These guys. Yeah. The main thing I wanted to redo is the next instance of damage because the one damage doesn't have to happen because we can just redirect that. So this is a no. Yeah, this is not reduced, so yeah, but we can do this one. And then that one. Okay, there we go. We did all of that to not take two damage. <laughs> Alright, remove the block as much as I want to remove Rook City. Ruins of Atlantis is here. Yay! Oh. He moved to battle zone two. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch! He moved to the other battle zone because that's what the freaking thing says. Wait. Oh yeah, I needed the damage already, right? It was just the one turret. Okay, that's actually really annoying then. All right, we're losing heroes. That's what's happening. Mobile defense platform is here. Well, the good news is Rive doesn't die, I guess. I guess that's good news. When this card is destroyed, each player may draw a card and use a power. All right, we're doing that first because these are people's swan songs. So might as well, I guess. Um, Actually, no, mainstay to keep someone alive. Mainstay to keep someone alive. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Sentinels can use a power. There's like no reason to do the HP recovery one. Wait, Hako keeps someone alive. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, Hawk is the only ink cap. Okay, I'm waiting on Shattering Blow. I'm waiting to use Temporal Shielding or Defensive Blast once I have the shard. So I'm doing this one. Movie and equipment, because I don't want to play those. I guess I could technologically advance. What damage are you dealing now? End of your turn, you deal Infernal. I want to change my plating. Maybe I should have changed my plating first. Because this comes back to my hand when I play it. So maybe I should have done that instead. Okay. Wait, I have to do this all over again? Oh no. Okay. I was going to make a joke about how Ruins of Atlantis is in the game and then how Ruins of Atlantis is out of the game, but that didn't happen because he changed battle zones. But it's actually okay. Mobile defense platform is better than Rook City, that's for sure. Do this. Do this. Okay. Basically doing the same actions here.
But now we get this plating in play instead. I could have technologically advanced to get the plating, but I would rather play it from hand. I guess I probably could have just done that and I would have gotten more platings to discard. Maybe that would have been smarter. I don't know. Okay. Shadow Cloak keeps Rhyth alive. We can't use this to deal multiple instances of damage. Because I need to keep the Shadow Cloak in play, so I'll deal I'll do this one. Alright, so Shadow Cloak. Don't discard Grasping Shadow Claw. Unless I can get it back. This shuffles into the deck when it's just, when it's, yeah. So I can discard, okay. Okay. Wait, where was it? It's here? I can at least get Chekhov's Hair Dryer before Hakka dies. Sure. So that damage was prevented. And Omnitron U is saved by Haka. And either Idealist or Medico is saved by Mainstay. And it has to be Medico because we can get our incaps back. And then the rest doesn't matter. Oh no, one of my cards was destroyed. Oh no, I used this power twice. Oh no, we got the Oblivion Shard. Okay. We still have the minus one? We do. Shadow Cloak makes that zero. Medico with Apex and stuff is awesome. Okay. I think we don't take the psychic damage there at least. And then this is the three damage, which is zero, and one, and one. Nice. Okay, so Haka's replacement is Unity! Reunited with Omnitron! All right, so we're gonna be playing Grasping Shadow Cloth. Cause we're gonna move it from our trash to our hand and play it. Cards cannot be played from that deck. So it should be safe to leave Unity here. Man, we only got one ink after that. That's ridiculous. Thank frickin' God we didn't lose all of our setup because that would have made this a lot worse. Okay, say. So the in-cap abilities, draw a card, destroy an ongoing card, put a card from a hero trash on top of its deck. You can get lucky break back very easily then. Or T-Rex bot, actually. Ooh. Um... You are playing Team Communication, but you're also going to finish with Restorative Burst, probably? Because we need to revive Mainstay. Because Mainstay is going to keep Omnitron alive as he uses the Oblivion Shard.
but a lucky break is really good. p rex spot is really good. They're both really good. If I put T-Rex bot on T-Rex bot on top, I can't play technological advancement. Also, unity with bots. Cool. Um, kind of difficult to get her to play those, I guess. Unless we have ink apps that let cards get played, which we do. Um, there's also Chronos and Cursor in there. Chronos would be really nice too, I guess. That plays bots. Okay, I think we're just, we're gonna use our ink caps at this point, right? We don't need any more objectives because our victory condition is on the Tron blowing up Oblivion, right? So. Yeah, let's... Damn, I want all of these. Lucky break. And then it's Somber Tinker. Get the Shadow Cloak, play the Shadow, or sorry, Shadow Claw. Select the deck, or sorry, move one card from a trash pile to the bottom of its deck. Cards cannot be played from that deck. Okay, so this is what it is. So move a card from this deck, such as the ongoing card. Destroy the Shadow Cloak. Shadow Cloak comes back to me. Card play doesn't happen. I draw a card and use a power. Damage. Blowing up Faultless would be nice. We have many an opportunity for that. I guess actually just Oblivion Shard Defensive Blast does it. So you can stay. Still have true hero. Don't want to lose that, so we can use ink cap. Stopping mobile defense platform from doing anything silly. We can't trade. I guess we could shuffle the mission deck if we really wanted. Let's stop the environment from doing stupid stuff. How about that? So reduce damage dealt to and by environment targets. Card two. Um, let's do that. Let's do this first to get the lucky break, and then I can do the signature move. Not signature move. Uh, <laughs> Any capabilities. There are steel chains because we're bringing mainstay back. And shield is in play. We could gamble on lucky break because your deck is largely one shots. If we miss, we do have an ink cap that allows for a card play. So we play lucky break here. Let 
and gambling. And we're revealing... Oh my god. <laughs> Can we get to the reveal? It's a one shot. All right, cool. <laughs> that was so hard. All right, so brainstorm, sure. We have a lot of T Rex bots. Or, sorry. Oh, no, it is T Rex bot. No, it's Raptor bot. We have a lot of Raptor bots. Electron X. We did not do the thing, so we can play the technological advancement. Um, the shark goes first, so we can get damage things going on. shots there's no environment cards no ongoing cards and just do straight up damage on that we have a power if we want it or a simple damage source uh, we do get a power off of faultless so we could do this right we get does everyone get a power or does only one hero get a power at the end of this turn, each hero may use a power. Okay, yeah, so... We do get lots of powers, and therefore lots of instances of damage. And you can play a one-shot, which is team communication. Get another signature. Look in this form sounds good. And then I can play another team communication. Alright, no more cantrips, so restorative burst. Which we needed to play. Get mainstay back. And second chance as well, yes! We're reviving the Sentinels one by one! Stay here. You could destroy the Shadow Club. Um, probably not. Wait. Oh, this is not... If I destroy this, I lose its effect. So I can't destroy that with Unity and then get it back into play that way as a cheaty way. Although I could if Unity was first, but then that'd be a bit awkwardly... We'd still... Yeah. Um... Could use an ink cap to have someone play a card. You could play Raptor Bot, but there's no golems in play, so it's just damage. Get Chekhov's hairdryer for more straight up damage right now. Get me her legato for just damage.
Let's take Chekhov's hair dryer just because that's more damage than a Horlegato. Let's not destroy Faultless because Devastation Tokens. Stay. I mean, sure. Take. No harm. Discard. Defensive Blast. Activates Oblivion Shard. Now we're dealing five damage with this. Don't hit Faultless yet. We're using Defensive Blast, so we're discarding Elemental Axe of Chassis. I don't want to play that. We don't have extra powers, and I need to keep cards for discard. Although, do you have a straw cards by chance? Nope. Okay. So let's just keep the cards in my hand and then use Defensive Blast. And damage Oblivion first. And then this kills Faultless. Which removes a token, which is why we didn't do that until that point. I reveal three different keywords. I revealed one shot ongoing limited equipment component. That is five. That's all. We have a gun. Whenever a hero uses a power, deal damage. We're not in this battle zone. Who cares? Prajni says, move to the other battle zone. Rude. Well, now Battle Zone 1 is just empty, I guess. Fine. Propulsion Systems is here, but it has damage dealt minus two, so it's okay. Now we're here. Hit points. Move a blow to this battle zone, add a scion. Okay, fine, let's put scions back in the game. Sure, why not? God. And then damage deals each hero one and one. While it's actually zero to mainstay, so we say yes to this. Does hit mainstay. Lucky Bright can take it. Unity can take it. Now everyone gets a power. So I'm gonna try and you. You can either bring the plating back so that we can defensive blast next round. Ideally, we don't have to. We would like to not deal with. Oblivion playing a million cards because we don't have damage or uh, card play prevention after this round. So I think we want to try to win this round if possible. Which we do have this for a little bit of damage. It's not as much as Defensive Blast would be, but it's something. Also, would Defensive Blast accidentally kill the propulsion system? It would. <laughs> if, it, if it were to go off, but it can't go off anyway. Unity. You can just use Chekhov's hairdryer. It's good damage. So, Sanction. This card is destroyed. Move cards from trash to hand. No one cares. 
Writhe, do damage. Could do conceal the assailant for max damage. I don't think we're gonna win this round, but we could win on a on a Omnitron's turn if we don't leave any other hero in that battle zone, probably. There are no powers there. So you just have to use this one. And we get extra power, I guess. Sure. Oblivion at 40. Oblivion cannot play card. Oblivion is, is hitting mainstay for one, so we can't redirect all of this, but we definitely redirect the uh, Omnitron one. We're not dying. I think the others are fine. We do have Caligonous Form, but it's not doing anything, so... Okay. We could discard a card. We could chance on another Grasping Shadow Cloth. It's not terribly likely, though. Okay, so do we gamble with Oblivion card, please? If we had a, an action here to play a card, or destroy an equipment card, we could destroy this before it shuffles in, and then we can retrieve it through some other avenue, which we don't have. I guess what we could do is have Omnitron play Singularity. He destroys his equipments. He has three of them. With the Oblivion Shard, that's plus four damage each. That's two plus four is six. That's 18 damage. And then Singularity will do three plus four, which is seven. So that's 25. Still need 15. And then we don't have our Infinity Cannon for damage anymore. We would still need a little more. T-Rex bot is there. Maybe we leave Sentinels in the same battle zone and risk that play. I don't know if Riot's play works. Maybe it does. Because you do do have damage. The main problem, though, is that if Oblivion does deal damage, you only have so many times that means they can take the damage. It is minus two, though. Three damage would be one damage. We'd have to take some of that. If any hero self damage, that'd be zero, but he would move to the other battle zone. I don't know, maybe we could gamble it. We do have a bit of protection, so maybe it's okay. Like, we can't prevent the card play, but we can. We do have some prevention. 
The card from Hero Trash on top. Hero's bought the best here. If we could find a way to draw it. Without like wasting so many actions. Ideally. If we do T-Rex Bot, we could still do the Singularity thing. Because we could do my play phase on playing T-Rex Bot, play Singularity, destroy my equipments, and then T-Rex Bot still exists. And T-Rex Bot with the Blue Vanguard is 9 plus 4 is 13, so that's even closer. We shuffled my cursor in, and my Kronos in, that's what that was, okay. Okay, let's see if we can get lucky. Reveal... Top three, one hand, one trash, one bottom, and then I may play the bottom to destroy this card. That is not grasping Shadow Cloth. Whenever here, target will be dealt damage, you'll be destroyed the Shadow Cloak to redirect that damage to a target of my choice. I don't think I'm playing the bottom of my deck is what I'm thinking. Cursor's on top. Destroy the non-villain target with the lowest. It's mainstay. So mainstay's gone. Also, he's moved the battle zone one. But that's actually really good because now we can spend our in-cap actions on Omnitron U without having to worry about Oblivion plays. So it's okay. It's not ideal, but it's okay. So just do this because we don't really have anything else to do. Anything that we can do to improve Omnitron U. Which isn't that much here. We need capabilities to get the last signature. And then restorative burst to bring mainstay back. points Let it go hits himself can hit themselves. I guess I'm not trying to get hit himself. No. 
All right, we have one shots. I guess we do have this helping Omnitron X one shots. So we can play reset, but we have to draw a T-Rex bot first and that doesn't work. Unless someone else can give a card draw somehow. Which I don't think we got. Here to do. You don't want to play those. Idealist is back. Stay here. Use the in cap. Reveal the top card of one deck. Put it into play. That's really good. But just put T Rex spot into play. How about that? Instead of drawing it, how about just put it into play? How about that one? T-Rex spot. All right, we can put Raptor bot in play if we want, but I think that's more damage anyway, right? And it's irreducible. Stealth bot is here. nothing. I guess the disadvantage of T-Rex bot is that you can only go off after Omnitron use play is over. So we're kind of gambling on... Ooh, there's also Toxic Seaweed. Yikes. I guess we could blow it up with Bioengineering Beam. Uh, which... Wait, maybe I don't activate the shard then. Wait. What if I just wait around? I don't think I'm in a rush here. Okay, let's wait around. Because he's gonna move back to battle zone two. If I don't have the shard active, I don't take a million damage. Now let's just wait here. This sounds way better. Cause I don't want toxic seaweed to screw things up. Stay here. Let's reset. And we could activate this. So I can actually double up on the effect with Singularity next turn. That sounds even betterer. Even betterer. So let's not use Infinity Cannon. Let's use Volatile Wiring this round. Um, and I don't have anything in my trash, so I have to play a card, sure. I get a plating so I can use defensive blast, then that clinches the win, right? Because now I can just use defensive blast with a Blavion shard. At the end of the environment, turn play the top card of the villain deck. No! No! The Abyss stares back. No heroes are moved this way, so Blavion moves. 
But wait, we get powers. But wait, I didn't activate the Oblivion shirt. Okay, well. Okay. Well, the good news is. Oblivion is here, so Faultless powers are really good. The bad news is. You have minus two, right? Yeah. This is not doing anything. The bad news is we don't have the plus ones, but we have powers. So we can damage Oblivion. And Idealist is back, so we can put a minus on Oblivion. Which helps to ensure that Oblivion damage isn't bad. Damage. But it's all redirected to mainstay. Right? Oh yeah, it's not assist damage, that's why it's three, but yeah. I'll do it this round. Hold tab. Now we have the powers. Alright, so Unity is doing Chekhov's hair dryer. Scythe is doing Umbro Siphon. I guess we could do this if we're planning on winning. It is 9 damage. I guess I don't need the Shadow Cloak. No, it's not 9 damage. Wait. Why isn't it 9 damage? Oh, because I'm not Nemesis. That's why. Okay. Well, then I'm not going to do the rest of it. Because it's only a measly 4 damage. If I if I was trying if if Oblivion is less than four HP after this is all done, I'll be sad. Those are back in black. And then here... I think I'll just do this. Although I have to play something. But I could just... Yeah, I will have a million instances of dealing two damage plus X. Damage. No heroes are moved this way. We'll move Oblivion to the other battle zone. We kind of want someone to move then, because we don't want Oblivion in battle zone one, right? Except at the end of his turn, he moves anyway. So we could take zero damage, he moves, then he moves back, and we'll add more tokens as the result. Um. Choose for me, and yes, and it's zero. Okay, yeah, so we tab the rest. Then he moves back, and now it's three, but it's still zero.
And now, we don't need anyone to be in this battle zone other than Omnitron, as Omnitron will win the game. So we move here. And our in caps. We have nothing in our trash, so we'll just take on Nature's Compulsion. So now at the end of my turn, I could move back to Battle Zone 2 if I so wanted. Which is really interesting. Shadow Cloak is not in play, but I can still play this, but I can also just play it off this, because I'm not taking damage off the Toxic Seaweed once. Well, I guess I will probably. Unless I discard. It's okay. Oh no, Shadow Cloak is already in play. Wait. I never destroyed it. Right, that's... Okay, okay. So I don't need to use that power. What am I doing? What am I doing? There's no one here. I don't even have to use a power. Okay. Well then. Once main stays here, but he doesn't have minus. He only has minus two. Only minus two. Only minus two. Okay, I want to destroy that then. I could also just yeah, I could play. Okay, Shadow Cloak is in play. I thought I destroyed it because I was planning on destroying it that round, and then I didn't. That's why I'm confused. All right, play that. Those don't do anything. And then I don't need to... Uh, right, this is that power, so I don't need to use that power. I can stay here, really. I guess, no, actually, no, I can move back. Nah, I don't care. I'm not gonna go back another time. Okay. Then you move. And... This is a shuffle, so that sucks. Discard two. Sentinel Straw. You know they have a million cards. Really doesn't matter. No one to damage here. Let's just skip, skip. I guess this is technically better as I can get hit points. Hello, Iron Moose. How it goes? We should win on Omnitron's turn. One shots. Is there literally anything that does anything? I mean, the answer is no, but like, you know. Just to entertain the possibility of winning stronger. I guess. I don't know. Everyone in Battle Zone 1 has max HP. You're here. You can take me for Legato, I guess. Uh, which shield was it? The Effusion of Pain. Stay here, and um, keep that. I have to discard a card. So, Singularity is way more damage than Defensive Blast right now.
So I don't play it, but I use my power to play it. So now when I destroy my stuff, this goes off once, twice, and it would have been a third time. But we won! Finally! The sacrifices of heroes were not in vain, and the lost timelines will be remembered. We have defeated Oblivion and saved the multiverse. We lost two environments and five heroes. I don't think anyone's going to mourn the loss of the block or Rook City, though. And for once, it wasn't a Voss Livion match. So, finally, I avenged my match from last week. I guess finally sounds like it's very dramatic, but. Last week was a very bad match. We lost in like one hour and ten minutes. But this time, we defeated it. Um, bit of a exciting game. Wasn't sure that we had the power up until we got the Oblivion Shard. But even then, it was like it didn't really impact the match that much, I don't think. Because we did have a bit of ping damage going on throughout the match. We did have to decide that we weren't going to defeat Oblivion on page two. So we had to lose the environment and then... 
Um, if I had read the cards, I would have realized he would have changed battle zones and destroyed that environment instead. Well, not destroy that environment instead, because we lost the countdown, but also 12 devastation token uh, destruction was happening. And that was going to be pretty bad until we realized that uh, Haka was going to prevent one hero from getting incapped, and um, Mainstay was going to prevent another hero from getting incapped, and um, of course, uh, Void Guard Wraith can just prevent the damage by discarding a card. Thereby, we only lost one hero, and that was Extreme Primordial Haka, and that was the last incap that we had. And ultimately, we ended up finishing with relatively high hit HP totals. These heroes were at max HP, and Unity took a bit of damage. Uh, and on the Trine, you took some damage, but he was as low as 6 HP at one point. So him getting back up to 18 is really nice. Uh, but of course, um, <laughs> that sounds like a sacrifice that wasn't in vain. Yeah, it was a very worthy sacrifice. Um... And it kind of goes to show the power of redirecting damage to a target, especially when that target has an innate minus two, such as Mainstay with the uh, Apex of Humanity and his Durasteel Chains, innate minus two. When you put a minus one on Oblivion, it's minus three damage dealt by Oblivion to hero targets, so that prevents a lot of HP damage. So, that was really nice. Nice finish to the match, and... Ultimately, I was not panicked throughout that fight. Apex of Humanity on Sentinels is whack. Yeah, as soon as we got that, I was like, yes, this is nice. All right. So I am done for this week. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Be sure to check out the other streams we have on this channel. Every Friday at 4 p.m. is Luck of the Shameless with Seamus the Hug Monster. Every Sunday at 1 p.m. is Spirit on Sundays with usually Seamus the Hug Monster. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. is Handle Lobber Live with John. And every Thursday at 7 p.m. is Dolphins Dive with yours truly. Handle Lobber products include Sentinels of the Multiverse, Sentinels of Earth Prime, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, One Deck Galaxy, uh, Aeon's End, Spirit Island, and Horizons of Spirit Island, all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices with the exceptions of One Deck Galaxy, which is in early access on Steam, and One Deck, uh, One Deck Dungeon, which is also available on Switch. Follow us at twitch.tv slash games to watch the live streams or watch us on YouTube for the VODs. Follow me at twitch.tv slash logicdolphin if you would like to follow me personally. But until next week, have a good night, peeps.